In this video, I want to go over a really useful tool, especially if you're working on projects. And that tool is related to Gantt, G-A-N-T-T, -T, or what we often just call a Gantt chart. Maybe you've been in a project before at work or at school, and somebody has told you, you need to turn in a Gantt chart. So a Gantt chart, I think, what is it? Most of us probably have some idea. Let me start out with Gantt himself, and this is the man right here, Gantt. That's the name it's taken from, and he is the one of the inventors of the Gantt process. There's a few, but this is the guy who really made the chart for the Gantt chart. And this would be like in the 1910s. So that's where the name comes from. That's not too unusual, but what's it all about? Well, you've probably seen Gantt charts that look something like this. That is a number of lines that are showing some times to do some jobs and they kind of link together from the beginning of the project until the end of the project. So that's what a Gantt chart looks like. Just some lines that tell you what different jobs are and how they interrelate. That's the basic concept. Well, outside of the basic concept, uh, how do we find out or use the detailed concept. How do we actually get down to work to use this? And that's where they, things get to be a little bit problematic because it can get very complicated. So certainly there's software to solve this. And if you use a project management tool from Microsoft or from Oracle or one of these big companies, and those tools can be ex very expensive project management tools, I'm sure they include Gantt processes, Gantt charts, uh, flows, critical paths, things like this. What about for regular people who don't have access to that kind of expensive software? Or what if your organization just wants to save money and, you know, have a good tool? Well, I'm going to introduce to you what I think is a great tool that I've been using for many years now, and that is Gantt Project. And you can find that at the website gantproject.com biz, B-I-Z, so Gantt, G-A-N-T-T, project, dot, B-I-Z, biz. Gantt project is an open source project. It's free software in the sense that it doesn't cost anything, but I also think there's a team of people working on it, and they, um, the code is open, and you can, you can uh, give them feedback and input and things like this, and they can they can um, try to modify. What's beautiful about this software is it's uh, written in Java, so it can be used on any platform. Um, a Windows machine, a Windows, uh, Windows box, a Mac, Macintosh box, a Linux box, which is what I'm using today. So you can use it anywhere as long as you can run Java and it just works great. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to use this program Gantt project, very, very basic. The best way, of course, to learn anything is to get your hands on it and, and use it, try it, practice. That's especially true for software. And Gantt project has so many features and so many abilities. Lots of times I use it in class and my students will do something and I have to stop the class in the middle and say, hey, how did you do that? That's really interesting. So you really learn by doing in this case. But let me show you the basics of it to get you started. So, of course, the first thing is you need to go to the website and download it. So you go to the website and download it and then execute it on your machine. There's a great big download button right there, and you can go ahead and install it. Now, once you've gotten installed and you open it, this is what a blank project looks like. And let me just open up a project that has some work in it so we can get a kind of reference point here. This is what a project looks like with some data in it. You can see the lines here follow a kind of schedule. We're beginning over in April and then May, June, July, August, September. So it's a day by day, month by month. It could even be hour by hour. You can get really specific 
but generally we're just going day by day here. How many days is each part of this project taking? On the left side are a list of the tasks or activities that have to be done. And here it doesn't look like that many, but actually they're all compacted down. So I can expand those and now you can see there's a lot more detail. This is a student's example. Uh, a lot more detail you can actually get by expanding it. Okay, so that's, that's an example. I'll close that and then we'll come back to an empty one here. So we're back to our empty uh, Gantt project here and it has already opened to June uh, 23 because today is June 23. So when you begin with an empty one, it's going to open up, go right to the day you're at. Now you don't have to use that day. You could be planning a project for the future, in which case you use your mouse and as long as you're on the timeline here, you just click and drag it back and forth. So you're moving the days and the months back and forth by clicking. In this side here, you cannot move it back and forth because it's going to be a list of activities, of jobs to do. On this side of the timeline, you can move it like a, like a movie strip or, a, or some pictures. Now up in the top here, when you get over the date, if you use your scroll wheel, that is you move your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. But this zooming in and out, what it does is it compacts it and puts years and months together in a smaller, smaller space. Or you can zoom in and get down to individual weeks and individual days. So moving your mouse up to the top and scrolling will do that for you, zooming in and out. There's also a couple buttons here, zoom in and zoom out. So what I like about this program is almost everything you do has more than one way to do it. And that's pretty common in open source software because it's, it's very creative and really helps you to overcome your learning problems when you first begin. So there's always more than one way to do something. And the way I'm going to show you today is not the only way. There's multiple ways for almost everything here. Okay, we're going to begin by just adding just one little thing here. So what we can do is we can come over to the task area on the left side and right click. And there's a context menu that pops up that says new task. So I, I right click and get new task. Now of course I can go up to the menus also and our menus has a task menu and in the task menu there's a choice for new task. So exact same thing. That's what I mean about there's more than one way to do something. And then you have to give the task a name. So what I'd like to do is give you an example that my students are often working on which is their research work. So their research work has usually for graduate students within two years they have to get all their research project done including a dissertation. So how would they make a schedule? Well maybe one thing they would do is they would uh, choose a professor. So maybe that's one task they need to do. Choose a choose an advisor I should say. Now when I choose an advisor I can then change its dates. So I can have a beginning date and an ending date for this task. And you can see here we have a beginning and date ending date. By clicking twice, double clicking, I open up a panel that has all of the details including the name and the beginning date and the ending date right here. Or you could just have the beginning date and then how many days is this going to take for me to do, to complete. Or you could set it with this checkbox here as a milestone. So a milestone is really a key idea because a milestone means this date is a date I must meet. So a milestone is usually used for measuring uh, how much have you gotten done or getting to a certain point and you have to make sure you get a certain part done there first. I mean some simple example is you have to put on your socks before you put on your shoes. So if you're trying to plan out putting on your shoes, maybe one milestone is check to make sure your socks are on. So this has to be done first. So in the case of choosing an advisor, the situation is more like there might be a day that you have to have this done by. It has to be done before that day. 
So you could check milestone and that will set that date as being the date that must be done at and it will not move. So let me just go ahead and uh, say that I'm going to not make it a milestone, but rather I'm going to say I'm going to begin looking for my professor in the summer here in June from June 30 and then I'll see if he's, this is not very realistic, right? And I'm going to give myself maybe 20 days to do that. Totally unrealistic. I'm just making these things up. Okay, so I'm going to give myself 20 days for that and then I can choose things like priority, how important is this. I can also choose to show in the timeline or not have it inside the timeline. I can change its colors and its um, whether or not it links to something else. There's many options here that are really cool. Predecessors is a tab. Up here we have some tabs. And predecessors tells us what are the things that have to be done before this. So is there something I had to do before this? And I don't have anything here to choose because I don't have any other options yet, but we'll get into that in a second. What resources is this going to take? And usually resources are, are categorized as other people or other departments. So these are not resources in the sense of money, although it could be. But I think often we're thinking in resources as people. And then we can create more columns. We can actually, on the fly, create other variables that we can put into this that fit just the kind of work we're doing, the kind of project we're doing. Again, a key point here is that this is for project management. So keep in your head that we're doing a project that has many different parts. Some things have to be done first, some things have to be done last, some things have to come in a certain order, some people have to work together in a certain way. So project. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK with that. And then I've got my line here. And what is this blue line I have here? Well, it's showing me that from the date I set, which was June 30, until uh, 10 days later, that I've got this amount of time. Hey, was it 10 days that I put in there? Let me go ahead and go in. 20 days. I put in 20 days. So 20 days is the time I have to find my professor. Again, that's completely unrealistic, and especially in the summer, you're not going to find anybody, but we're just making up an example. All right. After I find my advisor, I think one thing I would do is choose my topic, right? So I can right click on here and I can add a new task, and now I can say choose research topic. Now, I don't really want to choose a topic before I find my professor. Let's say that that's the way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead in here and double click. And I'm clicking into the date. And we get the details coming out here. I can go to the predecessors tab. I can add a predecessor. Now because I only have two tasks, then when I use this drop down menu, I'm only going to have one option because obviously if I have two tasks, only one can be a predecessor. So the only one I have is choose an advisor. So what we're saying here is if I choose a research topic, I must first choose an advisor, and that makes sense. And so here I'm going to say that I'm starting this on June 27 to choose my topic, and let's give myself five days for that. And then I'm going to click OK. And now we can see over here what we have is the first task, choose an advisor, this line, and then the second line is choose a research topic. Now, most importantly, as you can see, there's a small arrow there. That arrow is telling us that this second task follows the first task. You cannot do the second task before the first task. Now, let me go ahead and add another task here. So I'm going to say I'm going to add another task, and we're going to give this task a name. I'll just click into the card here, into the details. So this task, let's say that there's something I need to do that is not really related to my advisor or specifically to my topic, but rather I want to begin to study how to write research papers. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the APA manual. So I'm going to study that. So I'm going to APA manual study. So this is something I want to do over uh, maybe a month of time to really get my head around what to do so I can be ready ahead of time. 
So I can go ahead and choose what day I'm going to begin that. So let's say I'm going to begin that on, uh, let's say, June 25. And let's go ahead and say that I want to do that for a month. So we'll put in 30 days. And I'm going to say OK. Now you can see I have this APA manual study which is going on outside of this arrow. There's no arrow. So this is a good example of a Gantt chart does not have to have everything linking to everything. Not everything must have an arrow linking to something. And in fact, not everything needs to be done depending on another thing. In this case here, what I've done is I'm studying the APA manual, I'm studying to get ready for something. At the same time, I need to find my professor, choose an advisor, and then choose a topic. So these are not dependent on each other, they're separate, but they can run during the same time. So in this case, the a graphic is very clear in that it lets us uh, have this APA manual study on the outside here, not connected by an arrow, basically. Now, we can go ahead and we can move these around. We can actually move them up and down by just grabbing them. So I can move them around. We can also make subcategories. So let me get that one out of there again. I just made a subcategory by accident. In fact, I can click one and use these arrows here. So I can push APA up. Now they're all equal. Okay. And I can push it down to another level, push it up a level, move them up or down using the arrows, or you can move them around, dragging them with your mouse. So again, as I said, there's many ways to do it. And if you look here, you can see what I just did by accident is this second line is studying the APA now. The first line is choose an advisor. You must choose an advisor before you can choose a research topic. So you can see the arrow jumps over the studying APA manual. So it's independent of those. It's linked to time because I've given it dates, beginning dates, and then a 30-day uh, duration. But it's not something that has to be done before the rest. And in fact, I could change that. So I could go ahead and grab it and move it, or move the ends, I should say. I can get to the very end. Now, this is the only thing about the program that is a little bit annoying. It's difficult sometimes to grab just the right space, the right end. I'm going to move my mouse to the right end, and I want to grab it. You've got to wait for your mouse to change that little arrow and line, and now I can grab it and move it. That can be frustrating sometimes, especially if you're on a notebook and your screen is tiny and your mouse is jumpy. So what I've just done is change the beginning and ending dates just by using my mouse. I did not need to click in. Now I could click into the details and change the dates and duration anytime. Now one thing to mention quickly here is you can see the beginning date, but the ending date, why don't you put in an ending date? Well the reason is because Gantt charts are based on how long does the job take. It's not a question of the date that you want it done. It's a question of how long does it take. Then you add up how long everything takes. Then you're going to know when you can be done. Or you do the opposite, which is you have an ending date, something that has to be done by a certain date. This is the ending date. For my students, it's like graduation day. They're, they're um, exam day, their final uh, oral presentation for the thesis, defense day. They have to be done by that day. So then you take all your jobs, this takes 30 days, this takes 20 days, this takes 40 days, and you go backwards from there. And then you know when you need to begin. So it's really about how long each task takes. And that's a fundamental part of Gantt. It's not based on what you wish you could do. It's not based on how long you would like things to do. It's based on how long the task each one actually takes. So my examples are, are not a great example because we should have something that's a little bit more um, solid in the time it takes to do. But anyway, let me continue on, keep it easy to begin with. So we have a duration of 14 days now on this. So I could have come in here and manually changed it or I can use my mouse and grab the end. So I can just go to the end of this task and pull it down and it's getting shorter and shorter. Okay, wonderful. 
Now, another really cool thing you can do here is you can actually move your mouse to the left side and when your icon changes to be a little percentage mark in a black arrow, it's hard to do, it's jumpy, percentage mark, you can then click, left click and pull and you get a black line right in the middle of your task. What does that black line mean? It's percentage complete. If you pull it all the way to the end of the box, what do you get? 100%. If you pull it halfway, what do you get? 50%. So if you pull it about one-tenth, what do you get? About 10%. So this actually is something you can do to track your work because every day that goes by, you can say, I've got this much done. And then on this task, I got up to there, so there's that much done. Now, this percentage is a really handy feature, but again, you've got to be careful with your mouse. It's very jumpy, so you get to the side, and there you go. I've got a, an arrow with a line. That means I can grab it and move the beginning date. If I move my mouse a little bit up and on the left side, I get... Oh, no, it's not coming out. Oh, this is really hard sometimes. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh my goodness, when I need to do it, I can't do it, right? Uh, oh, I know what I was doing wrong. Because I already have the black line, I need to move my mouse over the end of the black line. Oh, I see, okay. See, I'm learning something every day myself. When it's on the end, 0%, then you grab the end. If it's not on the end, you have to grab it where the percentage is. Okay, got it. Wonderful. So, that's pretty easy to understand. But here's where the features of the program really come in to great usefulness. Let's look at the example of we have our choose an advisor and then choose a topic. I'm going to move APA manual up a level, so, not up a level, but up to the top. So they're on the same level. They're all, both on, they're all three on the same level. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this choose an advisor goes to this date and then choose a topic is this time here. Now what happens if I chose my advisor uh, sooner? I could actually come here and pull back this date and look what happened. When I pulled that date back because I got an advisor sooner, what happened? I can go ahead and choose my research topic sooner. Let me show that to you again. I'm going to undo. So here we have the blue line for choose my advisor. I need to you know, get a professor first and then choose my topic. So after I spent these days talking to advisors and I choose somebody, then I go ahead and choose my topic and choosing my topic is going to take this long. But for some reason I was able to choose a professor sooner than I thought it would take, faster. It didn't take me that many days. So what do I do? I can grab the end and pull it back because it's not that many days anymore. And as I pull it back and let go, the other task that is, de that is dependent on this task will follow because now I can do it sooner. Now, choosing my research topic still takes the same amount of time, but I can begin sooner and end sooner. And the opposite is true too. Let's say that I thought it would only take this long to choose my professor, but actually I had trouble, I had a problem, and it's going to take me 10 more days. I go to the end and I can pull it 10 more days out, and then what happens? Then the next task, which is choose my topic, will get pushed back because it cannot begin so early now, but it's still going to take the same number of days, but it's going to begin later and end later. So a real key point to Gantt is you don't just put in dates that you wish will happen. You don't put in dates that you hope will happen. You don't say, well, I think I'll have my research half done by this date and 75% done by that date. That's not what a Gantt chart helps with. That's just wishful thinking. What a Gantt chart helps with is each task you break down and see how long it will take. Now your estimates may not always be correct. Sometimes they're just guesses, guesstimates. So you take a wild guess. And as the time gets closer or as you do that task, you can adjust it. Now if it's connected to another task, then that task will move forward or back automatically. Now, of course, if you have a final due date that you cannot go past, 
as you move task around, there's going to be a problem because those other tasks may push over that time. So you need to readjust their times, which is kind of strange because they should not be wishful thinking. They should be realistic estimates of how long it takes. So if it takes you two days to write two pages, and up here you have two days to write another two pages, well, if you take longer, you cannot just guess that, well, I'll write these two pages in uh, 20 minutes should be enough. That's wishful thinking. That's not realistic estimating of those times, you see. So by having deadlines, you have to really be careful because these things bump along. They get this knock-on effect and can push you over. So you have to be very careful to realize you're not guesstimating. And the idea is it really helps us to know which tasks come first, second, third, etc. And then when we're done, what we can move on to. And hopefully if we get some things done earlier, we can pull things back and then the whole project can move back a little bit. Now, of course, in this example, the one independent thing I had was the APA manual study. It doesn't move at all because it doesn't matter if I get this finding my advisor sooner or later. So if I pull him back to be, I found my advisor even sooner, that does not affect my idea to study the APA manual at all. Now one more thing very quickly is we have these arrows. I, we just use them by accident actually. I can go ahead and create topic areas or big groupings of areas. So for example, I can say that I have a task and that this task is going to be section that I'm just going to call advisor. So this is stuff to do with my advisor. And then I can take this advisor work and push them down one level. So now that choose an advisor and choose a research topic is under the general topic of advisor. And you can see what happens when you do that. When you have a level one and then inside level one you have other topics inside that level you get this black line here. And what this black line is, is showing you is the beginning and the end of this whole topic. So the whole job of, of advisor includes these two sub jobs. And so their total time is there. And then on the left side, I can use this little minus or plus to expand or compact. So if I compact, I can quickly see advisor is going to take me this much time, all my advisor work. What is my advisor work? I need to expand it, clicking the plus button, and I can see choosing advisor is all of this work here. In this case, very simple, just two jobs. Okay, so that's a real basic. I don't want to overload you with things. I think you go in and try it out, you're going to find it's very intuitive, very easy, and once you understand those basic ideas, you've got it down. I'm going to show you a few examples from some of my students and then we can see what's positive and negative about these. So let me go ahead and open some examples I have. I'm not going to save this. Okay, here we go with an example. And you can see that we've got a lot of stuff here, right? So, so this is one more of the great advantages of Gantt is that a lot of information can be put together into one Gantt chart. And this information would be very hard to have like in an Excel sheet or a Word document or how would you do this? It's really hard to figure out how you would do this. So the beauty of this is you can have them listed here on the side. Now, of course, if you're using the software, it's really wonderful because you can go right ahead and close down, compact these levels, and then you'll be able to see things from a kind of a higher level, a higher view very quickly. So let's take a look at this student's work, which is very interesting. What she has done is she's got one big topic, one big idea, and that's master thesis. And master thesis begins on this date, and ends on this date. So this is the total project. Now, she has separated out her defense. So her defense is this little purple line here. You can change the lines, isn't that great? And then you can even see up at the top here, she has added these labels up at the top. So you can actually have labels up at the top that correspond to these sections. 
Here she's going to go to a conference, so up here, labels conference. Here's her defense, so up here, she's got a little defense tag. Very cool. Now, this gives us a fast overview, and even in the overview, we can see some really neat ideas. So we can see, for example, that her research and analysis one, which is this work here, and it's made up of many subgroups, many subtasks, this must be done before she can do summarizing research. So that totally, totally makes sense. Think about that for a minute. You have to collect your data, then you can analyze your data. You need to analyze your data, then you can write a discussion of your data. Um, you need to get input before you can do a revision. So there's lots of these kinds of things that have to be done before something else in your research work. So if we look here, we can see her summarizing research must be done after her research and analysis. And then after that, we've got this arrow here that goes all the way down to here, which is writing and editing and proofreading, proofing. So what she's saying is that first she has to do her research and analysis before she can begin summarizing the research. And then after she summarizes the research, then she can begin working on the editing and proofreading. But also, she has some other tasks that link up. So she must do research and analysis too. Now what's this about? Her research, I know this, this uh, student's research, she has two parts to her research, two data collection uh, sections. So she's going to research and analysis again, and then she has to do that before she can summarize. You cannot summarize and then before you have your analysis done. And then when her analysis is done, that also goes into her thesis, and she's going to do writing, editing, and proofing. So this is a great example. We actually have two totally separate, separated by what you're doing. She's collecting data on totally separate, um, not topics, well, they're kind of different subtopics. So she's collecting data on different subtopics. It's not the same data. And then she's analyzing it separately, and it's a little bit of overlap on the time. So this is December to May, she's working on this one. And then here, March until August, she's working on this one. So there is some overlap. But the overlap is maybe she did the collection and then, then later she does the collection for the second one. Okay, so both of these, however, go into the final writing of her dissertation, her thesis, which then she also has to do proofreading and editing. So this is a great example of how these two big tasks come together into one overall task. Now any one of these we can break them open to get more detail. So for example we were talking about her research and analysis. So if we open up research and analysis you can see it has many sub parts. And each one of these can be independent or dependent on another task. And how do you tell that? by the arrows, by the arrows. Okay, let me use this chance then to just follow up and show you. We have this subtopics here. Now, we have this analysis, and then here's the act actual uh, analysis of the scientific study. This is a, a plant growth study. And you can see that these blue lines here are not dependent on anything else. However, they are inside this treatment overall box. So if we move this overall box, then those subs should move with it. But if we try to move it to later, what happens? We can't move it to later because we've already set the date for what it's, what's dependent on it. So you have to watch out for how you set them and how you set their dependencies. And in fact, when you click into the details of the dependencies, you have options for their predecessors. Not this one, I think it would be this one here that has a predecessor. And here's a predecessor. And then you have the type of, of relationship. Finish to start, finish to finish, start to finish, start to start. It's a little bit hard to explain. Test them out and you'll get an idea how they work. And what do they affect? They affect, can you drag one, and how does it affect the other one? That's really what it's all about. Okay, so let me take one of these inside here, and I pull it back. And you see, 
when I pull back one of the tasks, the overall level, the overall topic area grows. Or if I, if I pull it back in, then it shrinks too. Let me expand another one here, summarizing the research. And let me do that again. So I'm going to take summarizing the research. I'm going to begin it earlier. What happens? You see what happens? It does not move my dates back. Let me do that again. I'm going to undo. So we have all of these tasks together lead to this task. And they all lead to this task here. None of the individual ones are, de are dependencies, but the overall, all three of these must be done in order to do this second one. If I move this task here, I'm going to try to grab it. Oh, it's getting tricky again for me. See, it's trying to do percentage. Oh, there it goes. I had it and I lost it. This is the only part of the program that's a little bit hard. Okay, I've got it. I'm pulling this earlier. Do you see? I'm pulling it earlier. So what happens if I pull this earlier? Can I begin earlier? No. It jumps right back. All I did was expand the number of days it's going to take. That's what I was talking about. Because the Gantt is based on how long does each task take, that's the key point. So when I pull it earlier, it can't go earlier if it's depending on another job to be done at a certain date. You cannot get done earlier than the ending date of the job you're dependent on. So this is a great example of how a software package can really help you control things by moving them around and not getting mixed up. If you did this on paper, it's easy to get things mixed up and, um, yeah, just to screw it all up. All right, let's take a quick look at another example then. I think that's a really complicated, great example one of my students made. That's a science study. Okay, here we go. So here again, we've closed down. We've, we've made the levels all compacted. So you see these lines with little um, brackets on them. That means we're looking at the high level. We can open any one of these levels and see the sub-levels and the sub-sub-levels. Very detailed. And this helps us to see on the big topics what's related to what. So here we have collect data and information that must be done before data analysis. Of course, that makes sense. You cannot analyze data until you've collected it. So here you collect it, and when it's done, you can begin to analyze it. Here we have meeting with advisor. Meeting with advisor is this red line here. I could expand it to be sooner or later or last longer and it should not affect other parts because it's not dependent or depending on anything. Let's open this meeting advisor up. And what has this student done? Well, she has, she or he has actually lined up, looks like a weekly meeting with her professor, which is great. So here's the weekly meeting. And actually some of them are even more detailed because this is summer vacation. So in the summer vacation, she's got these times fixed up to meet. One is a thesis writing meeting, one is a conference meeting, and one is a seminar meeting. So basically she's coming to school getting those all three done at once. And then these others are this meeting, meeting, meeting with the professor. And you can see that they're not connected by a line. Why are they not connected by a line? Because they're not really dependent on each other. Uh, she could move one of these forward or back without being stuck and waiting for another one. In other words, if I missed the meeting this week, I could just come in here and delete that one line for that week. Or I could come in here and say, well, I can't meet that day, but it's going to be a day later. I can't move it a day later. That will not push back next week's meeting. If this week is on Wednesday, next week's Wednesday. But then today I need to move to Thursday. Next week is still Wednesday. So they're independent of each other, and that shows in this chart here. Let's take a look at her uh, thesis writing. So here's the actual writing. 
And you can see when she breaks out the writing, she has some parts are dependent and some parts are independent of each other. So here we have, she's writing the outcome and then she's writing the conclusion. So she wants to write the conclusion after she's written the outcome. And then she's going to write the reference in abstract. So actually very smart, right? She can't really write the abstract until the whole thing is written. So that's coming in last. Now she could go ahead and say she's going to write the abstract first. She can, she can do that, but that's wishful thinking, isn't it? And then how long is it going to take to write the abstract? I think you need to sit down and think hard. How long when I write research does it really take me to write a page? How much does it take to write 500 words? And then put that realistically in. I think uh, we can see here that at least I really like the way she's linked some of these together. Uh, at the same time, literature review is this line here, and it's not dependent on the other parts. So she could be doing, or she will be, she plans to be doing literature review at the same time that she's doing the outcome. She's writing the outcome and literature review at the same time. And she's writing her conclusion and literature review at the same time. And that makes sense. You can do things in parallel like that. They're not dependent on each other. In fact, it's a kind of back and forth, right? When you're writing your research writing, you're looking at the things you're writing about and you're going back to the literature to find more information about the thing you're talking about. So that makes a lot of sense, just like it is. Now, when you're looking at a Gantt chart like this, you may look at that and you say, hey, this is a bit overwhelming. She's really got a lot of stuff on here. I mean, if we open up, expand all of these parts. You know, we're getting a lot of um, details here. We can zoom in and we can zoom out, but this seems, seems to be getting really complicated. Well, yes, that's what happens with Gantt charts. They get complicated very quickly. You get a lot of lines in there, but that's the point because the project has a lot of people, a lot of parts to do. If you don't have a way to organize it, how are you going to know who should be doing what? So the Gantt chart's big advantage is, for, like, for example, for the student, she has so many things she needs to be doing that any one day she can come here and see, where should I be now? What am I doing now? What am I doing this week? If you're working on a project and that project is many people, it's the same thing. This week, who is doing what, when, when is it going to be done, and who is waiting for who? Who is waiting for whom? And that's the great thing of a Gantt chart. Without a Gantt chart, how would you organize this? Very hard to know. Looks complicated, but I think it's less complicated than it looks. Okay, uh, one more example here. Let me just open up, a, pop open another one. Got some good ones here. Okay, again, you can see on this left side of task, the student's done a great job of breaking out the task in a lot of detail, and then having some dependencies on those tasks, and boy, oh boy, look at all those, right? Well, here I'm all expanded, so you can see everything. And here's some great examples here. We have design the survey. Let's look at this part. This looks wonderful. So we're going to have design the survey. Well, then you're going to have a pretest. You cannot have a pretest before you s design the survey, right? So pretest cannot begin until design the survey is done. Thus, you have the arrow there. You have the arrow. And then you have the pretest. Then you have the pretest data collection. Then you have modified the questions because you did a pretest. Then you have your regular survey. And you cannot do your survey until you've modified the questions, and on and on. Now, let me just grab any one of these here and see what happens. So if we take this pre-test and we say, well, this took longer than I thought it was going to take. If I click here, we can see that it was taking five days. We can actually set it to show days, I think. Let me see. Can we show days? Um, there's a setting somewhere to just to show the number of days each task takes. But uh, there you go. You can click on it also and see it. Five days. So this was five days. Let me expand this. So I'm going to grab this pre-test. And again, it's fiddly. I'm going to pull it a bit to be more. And what happened? It bumped up all of my following work. So they're not taking more days, but they have to begin later now 
and they have to end later. And that might be a problem if I'm going to have a deadline for some things. Okay. All right, I think that's enough for kind of in introduction. Again, it's called Gantt Project is the software. You cannot really use the software if you don't have a good understanding of the concept. The concept is how to take many different jobs that are dependent on each other, sometimes independent and can be running parallel or different people or different resources and map them out so everyone can quickly look together and see it. For my students, of course, if they're doing this for their thesis, how is this helpful? I tell them they can just take this out and show it to their professor. Their professor, they talk to their professor and they take out this again. They say, here's where I am today and here's where I'll be in 20 days and here's where I'll be in 30 days. And the professor, professor can look at it and say, you know what? You've set 10 days for writing your conclusion. That is totally unrealistic. A conclusion writing, to do that well, you're going to have to rewrite it a couple times. You're going to have to come see me a couple times. That's going to take 25 days. Change that. And that student can just change that and it will modify the whole project. That's incredibly powerful. Very great for showing, conveying these ideas without wasting time talking and getting confused. On the other hand, if you're doing something with a group of people, you're working together, uh, you have many people or many groups or people who are off location in different offices or even in the same office but on different teams. It's the same thing. Rather than saying, what did you do or am I waiting for you or when are you going to be done? You look at the Gantt chart and you can see, I'm waiting to begin on the 20th. Today is the 19th. I'm waiting because this person must be done task A. And I can call them and say, hey, are you going to be done task A tomorrow? If you're not, update the Gantt chart. So he can say, oh, no, I need, I need two extra days. And you say, well, then update the Gantt. They'll pull that out two extra days, and now you know instead of the 20th, I can begin on the 22nd. So now I'm going to be waiting for the 22nd because I can look on the Gantt chart. And the Gantt charts can get long and complicated, but I can look at it quickly and see my part is this part, and I know these are the things I need to do, and they're waiting for other things to be done. Remember, you can make the sections be indented, and then they become level two or level three. So you could actually have people being those different sections, and then the arrows can cross over to different people. So this person, one piece of his job is dependent on this person, one piece of her job. And those arrows can just come right over. So that's a really great um, aspect of Gantt Project. And again, Gantt Project, downloadable, usable, and cross-platform is at gantproject.biz. G-A-N-T-T project dot B-I-Z. All right, good luck with your projects.